running Hearts of Ulin Supernatural Playbooks for uh, the Gauntlet. Uh, we're using three safety tools, uh, Open Table, X Card, and Lines and Veils. I went over those uh, last session with uh, all these players. Um, let me ask uh, you all, does anyone have any questions about any of those safety tools? Fantastic. Everyone feeling okay about them? Everyone know oh, yeah. what they need to do? And Okay, cool. Um, so last uh, time, um, we uh, created characters uh, and created some entanglements, and that took the lion's share of uh, the session. And we are fortunate in that we've got a new player joining us, Joe. Um, Joe created their character offline, but now we've got some new entanglements to do. So that gave me an excuse not to formalize our player map yet, or our character map yet. So thank you, because I didn't get around to it. Um, so I'm wondering if we go down the row and do some character intros, uh, and then we'll uh, land on Joe's character, and then we can figure out um, entanglements from there. Uh, as a reminder, I like to do breaks on the hour. So uh, around nine Eastern, uh, we'll do uh, our first break. 10 Eastern, we'll do our second break and or we'll kind of wrap up uh, right around there when I start to get very tired. Um, so um, I've got Chad as the first player uh, on my character keeper here. So Chad, why don't you reintroduce us to Jim? Uh, my name is Chad. Uh, my pronouns are he and him. Um, my character's name is Jin. She is an alchemist, a loyal alchemist. Um, she is the twin sister of Jian, who is very entangled with our friends. Um, Jin is a is a um, fiercely, I want to say, fiercely um, independent woman. Um, she's very, um, uh, her, her, her looks are porcelain skin, unflinching gaze, long single braid and traveler's clothes. Um, she's traveled the, the kingdoms, uh, as a physician, um, as part of the physicians of grace, um, who is kind of a, um, an orthodox organizations that kind of, uh, it plays as a, a advisory role to no, the nobility in, in the, uh, the emperor. And she is, uh, she practices in the black glass wanderer style. Um, and her, she wields a sword. Um, but she's, yeah, she's kind of a very serious, um, very, I want to say cold, but you know, she's very, um, not very emotional, or at least doesn't seem to show it. Um, and she can be very, sometimes very severe, but but um, stern, I guess is the best word for describe her. Uh, so I'm gonna ask you uh, at least one, maybe two questions about each of your characters. So Chad, Hi. with respect to Jin, sounds like she's a fairly accomplished physician that she's mm -hmm. pretty good at what she does. But can you uh, maybe describe a time when she was unable to heal someone's ailment? Was there a, a time in her career where she just was not able uh, to, uh, to fix what was wrong with someone? Um, so um, when she was a little, uh, when she was still learning, or well, yeah, maybe not long ago, um, she was um, healing uh, during a, 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 a conflict. So it was a uh, during a, a war of some sort or, or some sort of uprising. And she uh, was probably the only physician in the area. So she got overwhelmed very easily and lost many. Um, it changed her. And it's kind of part of reason why she is so stern and so um, cold sometimes is that she it kind of resolved, her, it increased her resolve to do better nice. as a physician. Um, so, it, and, uh, and her sister is probably the one that noticed the most of her change because she used to be more like her sister, more, a little more charming and a little more 
flamboyant and uh and uh enchanting and now she's a lot um distant and and uh, serious and and uh yeah so it's great thank you and she is a member of the physicians of grace um who is actually let me ask a different question what is their uh overall standing in this world are they well respected are they feared how do how do people feel about the physicians of grace um i imagine there's kind of a split feeling amongst them one they are a, an order of physicians so um and they do extend help to most anybody they're not you know they're not necessarily for profit but then again they also seem to have their own goals and um like to use their influence to curry things in their political favor. Nice. I imagine they also do a lot of uh, research as yes. well. As... They're scholars, yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that ties into our move. Yes. Uh, awesome. Uh, I'm going to move on now to Drew. Can you introduce us to Gentleman You? Uh, Gentleman U is a big, burly, uh, lumberjack-looking man. He is uh, a cursed individual, or sees himself as such, perhaps. Um, he is associated with the Golden Mantis Order, who are heroes to some, uh, notably the, the poor and the other uh, foresty people, but uh, villains to nobles and anyone who is uh, unlucky to cross through their woods with money. Um, he wields, as any good woodsman does, uh, axes and fights with the way of the tree cutter. And uh, he has ties with a couple people from the city that uh, I'm sure we'll flesh out a little bit more with the new player. Uh, yeah, can you um do you want to tell us about at least one of those connections maybe the noble zhang or uh um your brother ice blood ning um do you remember either? well i remember zhang i was ning my brother i've written down bro it looks like we had something else and then i erased it and wrote brothers so i'm i'm game for that um, so when you lived in the city, he had a romantic connection with Jian, who is Jin's sister. Uh, when he left, he didn't see her for many years and came back to find her now with Zheng. And uh, that is hard on the heart. It is hard. <laughs> he's, a, he's a cursed. Remind us what that means. How does that manifest? in Gentleman Jew's life? Uh, so he is marked uh, in a way that isn't uh, immediately visible, but uh, he can um, feel through that, that scar when something otherworldly has a presence nearby, uh, now or in the recent past and he sees it as a threat to anyone who might be close to, which is why he fled into the woods. Great. When was the last time he felt a, uh, um, his mark signal him? What was, what was that situation? I think he was working with the Golden Mantis Order to uh, relieve a traveling noble of some of his property and something about one of the nobles uh, possessions was really really didn't sit right with him and he uh, it became clear that it too was cursed and it was a comb done. that gives me something to hook into uh, cool. Uh, I'm going to move, thank you, Drew. I'm going to move on to uh, Michael. Could you tell us about Bao? 
So Val is a uh, he's the exorcist. Uh, the exorcist. Um, he's a young man from uh, a local, like a nearby town. It's a really small backwater place, very superstitious, and that's why he, you know, kind of has an upbringing um, based in this these superstitions of dealing with ghosts and spirits. Um, he's recently come to this city to kind of start a new life for himself but has mostly just applied his skills to scamming people who think that they're cursed or haunted. Um, going through the motions, but he's not actually, you know, dealt with the spirit, uh, maybe ever. Um, he's also fallen in love with uh, Jian after Jin came to him and offered to be his patron, uh, which is a little bit tricky because they are twins, but uh, she's with Shang, so. It doesn't seem like too much has happened there. It's kind of like a watching from afar situation. Um, and back home, he was associated with a, like a minor religious order, the uh, Stone Circle sect, which is all about like the, the sanctity of rest and the afterlife. Nice. Uh, someone, I would imagine, caught Bao scamming them. Who caught uh, Bao scanning them? What uh, what happened during that incident? And are they still after Bao? Um, I think it was somebody who. Hmm. maybe a rival exorcist in the city who's kind of doing the same thing and I was edging on their turf. Uh, and so that's why they came to me and kind of, you know, made this big deal of what a fraud I am. Um, so that's put kind of a damper on business. Um, yeah, I think that's that. So this rival exorcist kind of sort of publicized the fact that you were actually a fraud and so right. stopped calling people have stopped calling for exorcisms Did I, get that I right? think i think maybe it's someone in the royal court who is like an officially appointed exorcist and that's why they didn't like some back alley guy doing it because now the peasants weren't coming to the royalty they were just you know coming to me and so that's why they had to make a big deal of it love it is there a special prop that you use when you run your exorcisms? Is there something that you sort of bring to kind of create the mood or uh, convince people that this is a real thing? I think it's, it's, um, there's probably a lot of, a lot of uh, incense and salt, but the, the thing that's actually real is uh, anointed water that I brought from the shrine at my hometown. And this anointed water is something that actually might have spiritual properties. I can imagine you sort of um, doing some sleight of hand so you don't actually waste the water. Like you want to keep it around because it's precious. Right. When you really, really need it. But because you're running all these scams, you are uh, maybe kind of swapping it out at the last minute. Does that sound right? Yeah, I think I've got one jar of the real stuff and it's got, you know, it's very, very ceremonial looking. And so people think that it's real, but then I switch it out to other jars that I've just faked that are just tap water or whatever's available. Right. Awesome. Thank you for that. And Joe, we come to you. Why don't you give us uh, maybe a little bit more detailed intro uh, to uh, Xia Fang and... Uh, Xia Fang. Say that one more time. Uh, Zaya, with like as in Z, uh, I. -A. Okay. Yeah. Uh, should I write that phonetically for people? Does it matter? Will that help? That's All good. Right. I may just call her Autumn uh, Fox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Zaya Fong, aka also known as Autumn Fox. Well, to some, uh, she's I forget which playbook is, but it's the hidden. Uh, what it's the last playbook. In the basic thing um she's not a supernatural playbook for everyone uh it's just like so her hidden is she hides her martial arts skills under like the guise of uh an entertainer uh 
Uh, whereas like, you know, but then she's got the masked identity of Autumn Fox, hero to the the people, uh, mm-hmm. to, you know, take down corruption and stuff. Uh, <laughs> Always got to work the superhero angle. I do, I do. <laughs> Look, I watched this one Chinese drama called Masked Vigilantes. They never once wore a mask. I was very angry. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, uh, look, uh, beautiful, uh, lustrous hair, lively eyes, elegant costume. And then, you know, I've got like a picture down uh, of the, the dual identity down on row 60, column P. Oh, nice. oh, I'll, make cool. a, I'll make a back- virtual background of it, basically. That's yeah, what yeah. I generally do. Um, uh, so yeah, like she's... She tries to hide her skill when, like, she gets in trouble. And it's always one of those things because, of course, she's going to get in trouble again because that's how plot works. Yep. It's like, oh, no. Tries to make it look like she's accidentally defeating people with stuff. But, like, you know, the discerning eye is like, wait a second. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the moves that you chose? All right. So the move, the starting move, uh, uh, the base move is uh, you hide your martial arts skill. You uh, flee enemies, run from duty, or protect someone secretly. When you fight against named foes or mooks, you may hide your stance. They will not recognize your skill. If you win at a cost, you may offer discovery. If you miss, your opponent realizes you're unusual. You have a uh, plus one ongoing to hearts and minds to convince someone that you're just ordinary just plain old <laughs> just a regular person yep. uh if another pc tries to pierce your disguise resolve this as a pc versus pc duel at any time you may choose to fully reveal yourself choose a role from a different playbook and replace this move uh, with that one nice okay yeah and uh, then the uh other moves i chose was everlasting chivalry you have plus one ongoing with interacting with the common salty the earth folk nice. uh, you know how to show that them you're one of them and then uh her name is nobody when you deliberately, deliberately head off alone into a dangerous situation, roll and mark XP. Uh, 10 plus, you know, then you got dice results. 10 plus, ready for the challenge. Take plus one forward. Center nine, you're unready. The enemy can act before you can. Even the scale, see something, change the locale, reveal a trap, close, you know, M- MC options. She's like, yeah, I got this. No problem. Oh, Dan. <laughs> no. no. Um... Let's do your entanglements, and then maybe I'll ask you some detail sure, sure. questions. So uh, I'm going to go, uh, I love Jin, but I know a dark secret about Princess Shu, who they adore. Because I'm just going to try to use the NPCs we've already got made, because it's hard to make up NPCs sometimes. Yeah, I had a different name on my uh, thing here. I had Princess Ming. Yeah, I wanted to change that because uh, we had Ice Blood Ming, and I didn't want that to get confusing. Uh, okay. Nicely done. All right. So Shu, I, I choose Shu. All right. So All right. see ya. You are... Now I got to think of a dark secret. Um, Is... So uh, ex... I'm sorry, Joe. Hang on. Uh, Jen, is that okay with you? Oh, I'm great. That's fine with that. All right. Now, uh, Michael, you're playing the exorcist, right? I remember you had mentioned something about like why people are trusting the royal family less regarding exorcism. I think, yeah, I think it's just a matter of the royal family being, you know, using this as just another way to control people and, and control the flow of wealth. So I'm thinking like we could tie into the dark secret of uh, Princess Shu along the lines of that, of uh, or like maybe she like wants to control like control the spirits basically so she's trying to keep a lockdown on like no 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 they're not they're not an actual exercise do not trust them trust in me okay i will see these people we're saying princess shu yes is saying about the royal exorcist not to trust them or saying about michael or excuse me Uh, saying about like exorcist not under her control like she's trying to control uh the narrative basically uh, <laughs> that's why she sent Jin to uh, possibly send a pa- patronize uh bow which is kind of interesting 
All right, so she, I like this. She wants to control exorcist narrative. Got it. Mike, is that okay with you? Yeah, I like that. That kind of ties it into everything. Yeah. Like I'm thinking maybe it's like, things aren't bad. We don't need them. <laughs> right, right, right. And then my other entanglement, uh, I want to do with the, uh, trying to figure out who to put who in what slot. Uh, but I've hidden my true identity from blank because of my past with blank. And if that's okay with uh, Drew and Michael, I'd love both of you to be involved in that. So, like, I have a past with one of you. Uh, uh, if, uh, Drew, is it okay if I have the past with you? Yeah, you could have uh, ties to the Gold Mantis Order. Cool, cool, cool. So, yeah, like, I'm hiding my identity from Bao because uh my past with the Golden Mantis Order. Uh, so let's figure out why is that like uh, hidden my identity from Bao? Because there is that thing about um, Jan coming to me about Bao, trying to figure out like you know why he um, pushed her away. But uh, I suspected that it was Ice Blood Ning who was sending her to ask, and he's the leader of the uh, Golden Mantis, if I have that correct. So it makes sense if you were part of the Golden Mantis with Bao, while you're also kind of trying to stay out of that that investigation, I guess. Okay, I'm just uh, and gentlemen, you as part of the Golden Mantis order, correct? Right. Yes. Correct. Okay. So yeah, like I like maybe I like did some work with them, uh, our our clans, because I'm part of the Red Flower Society. Whatever, we'll figure that out in play, maybe or not. I don't know. Uh, I love this game so much entanglements. <laughs> yes. Uh, but like, so like what I, what I think is uh, like basically uh, that's the ha hidden identity thing. I play, I like playing into the whole mask version, like where I take the mask off. Like, so like, you don't know that I'm Autumn Fox, but like gentlemen, you, you, you do know that I'm Autumn Fox. So you knows your identity. Yes. Uh -huh. okay. Oh, wait, does that ruin my one move? I don't know. No. Uh, so, eh. so that's when you take off your mask, your your Zaya, not. Zaya Fong, yeah. Yeah, Zaya Fong. Just, okay. just regular old common entertainer, commoner, courtesan, commoner entertainer for the, courtesan for the yes. people and the nobility. She's very mm -hmm. good at what she does. Yes. OK, we haven't even started playing, and I've got a headache from all the connections. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, it's the name of the game. Yep. Hang on, I'm trying to get a good picture of our entanglements. And does that work with uh, y'all? Yeah. Okay. That's great. That's great. Before I had even more hidden identity stuff, I'm like, no, that's going to be too confusing. <laughs> I'm going to post this just so we have it, but. Um, that, works, that works. Yeah, now I'm reading your other, uh, Bao's other general and you know, general entanglement about you asking for the, the suspicion of ice plunging. Okay. All right. Yeah, I got to, let's see. I'll take a bond with Jin. I should mark down. Shoo. And a bond with. No, I'll go with a bond with Bao. The one that doesn't trust me. Or I'm hiding my stuff from. All right. They would not trust me if they found out the truth. Oh, and uh, my pronouns are they, them, she, her. Thank you, Joe. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, let me just oh. a hard time getting this to myself. And are you putting that relationship map on the uh, on the spreadsheet or in the chat? Yeah, I'll put it in the character keeper. Okay. Yeah, I can figure it out. 
just a moment. I feel silly because before the session, I started to put one together and then. Yeah. So one of the good things is like uh, mechanical, all you really have to remember is who you have bonds with and like your own entanglements. Cause it gets very confusing. If you try to remember everyone else's that's that the MC has to deal with that. So uh, <laughs> I'm like, all right, I've got my thing written down right here. So this is what I know that I know. I know. Is it called an MC in this game or is it a GM? It uh, changes I'm, from game to game. I'm used to MC. Yeah. For so many years <laughs> through PBTA games. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, like I know some other PBTA games still change the name. Yeah. Like uh, Worldwide Wrestling, they're called Creative. Creative, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I've always wanted to play that one, too. I just want to play them all. Play all the games. So many games, so little time. Well, I think in this game, MC stands for Master of China. <laughs> it, technically, it's a fictitious china it's like not a real the land mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> you know it's at least it's not like the xena warrior princess version where they just drop the a it's just called chin <laughs> i haven't thought about xena in so long wow <laughs> it brings back memories i'm getting there friends thank you for your patience no problem, no problem. Thanks for allowing me to join a week later. That actually was a lot smoother than I thought it was going to be. So kudos to you for having such an awesome character to start us off with. Um, what does um, Zia, uh, what is her performance? Like, what is, what is her entertainment? Um. She does a bit of I'm not gonna like a bit of everything, but like her main like she does a uh, like cool uh, dance, but she also plays. I don't know what the the Chinese guitar version. Oh, is. the uh, from uh, God, I can not think like of, I can see it. Not like in Kung Fu. Well, yeah, why no, not? I was like thinking the, of uh, the the one uh, the one movie. It's so good, um, uh, where you can make the little paper paper. Uh, so, so like it's one of those i forget what it's called but it's like those ones that's like just laid out in front of you and you have to like sit before and kneel <laughs> and you play like double hand, sort of like a uh, peepa does she, does she like have a does she uh kind of busk on the street or does no she no performances i mean sometimes you know she she will gladly perform for the common people because she you know comes from the common people she's of them but uh you know the the wealthy will also patron her kubo okay. kubo it's from kubo uh, oh kubo called? and the two strings yeah that's such an amazing movie yeah movie's great laka incredible company mm -hmm. uh, so she she will um show up for like private performances or she'll play kind of big venues in the city yeah yeah or the, like and why not like she knows she, Japanese, she plays so. that the the long one and also like the the two the kubo type guitar when she's like well, the, traveling the the other the kubo one is japanese not chinese oh, darn it. <laughs> if but, you're i don't know if, if it's that restricted or not but yeah but <laughs> something like that because it's easier to ca travel with that than it is mm -hmm. the, the big old one the big one yeah does she do her autumn fox stuff is that kind of by night, she's doing Autumn Fox, or is it whenever is needed, or like when, whenever is needed. More often than not, at night. But like, I mean, it is fantastical China. Like, it, it's no. She yeah. could just walk down the street right. with a mask on. I'm sure there's other people wearing masks. Right, <laughs> masks all over the place here. Yeah. Um, and uh, is she? Uh, what is her mission as Autumn Fox? I'm trying to sort of get my arms around. Is she like a is she sort of protecting the common people? Is she just fighting crime? What is? Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, she's fighting injustice, protecting the common people, but she wants to expose like the, uh, the, uh, the the evil of the royalty. Okay. Like they are not here. They are not. She, Princess Shu is not here to help you. 
Like we, <laughs> there are serious problems going on, and she's just like, it's like uh, if you watched Avatar, there's no war in Bai Sing Se. There's no ball like, to war in Bai Sing Se. Yeah, like no, there's a war. <laughs> there are no ghosts. I'm like, <laughs> yes, there are. All right, cool. I, Make I don't tea, like dealing with war. them, but. <laughs> Nice. Um, okay, cool. All right, and um, uh, is there is there a, uh, an organization or a gang or a criminal element um, that she is particularly um, focused on besides the nobility? Uh, sure. Like the answer will always be yes. If you ask me what the name of it is, that's what is the that name takes, of the what that is, takes longer for me to figure it out. Is, Let's the, go over to these uh example names. And uh the uh and who who is her who is Autumn know. Fox's nemesis? Okay. Uh so I will go nemesis. Uh let's see, uh the the group that she's against is the uh the ninth void Ooh. and her nemesis is uh, uh cobra moon there we go nice. just steal a wrestler's name <laughs> That's the way to do it. Um, let me just make some changes here. Now we've got some names. Cobra Moon is the is the nemesis. Yes. Ninth boy. <laughs> And her uh, style is Trail of the Fox, and she uses daggers because they're easier to conceal than a sword. Cobra Moon, uh, what are their pronouns? Um, they, them, she, her. And this is, uh, this is just like keeping track of all my toys to play with. All right. Um... Is it uh, they, them as Autumn Fox and she, her as Zaya or? Uh, she, her as both. Okay. But Cobra Moon, the nemesis, is yeah. they, them. Okay. Um, let me just see if I've got anybody here. Uh, I suspect Cobra Moon's also a masked the. Uh, nefarious person yeah. don't know what they look like under the mask i had uh yeah that, that's fine that's all good all right let me um you know what i'm going to do um i would like let's take a break a little early because i need like five yeah it's to kind of absorb it scenes. it's like the worldwide wrestling of it all right i gotta <laughs> yeah. book the show right. now that i know what toys i have to play with so I've got 38 past the hour. So why don't we reconvene at uh, 45? So seven minutes. Sound okay? Good. All right. I'll see you in seven. Cool. Now I watch Kubo again. Ugh. This is a reminder, Dan, to start recording. Michael, are you back? Yep. Cool. Welcome back. Uh, all right, friends. Uh, thanks for that uh, break. 
Um, I think I am going to start uh, with uh, Bao. Bao, you've gotten a uh, request. Uh, you've got a new client. Um, you, there's an exorcism uh, that needs to happen um, at, uh, I call this place the Dumpling Den. And it's a, uh, there's a, uh, this, is, this place is very well known uh, for its uh, dumplings. Um, and uh, you receive word from the master chef uh, himself uh, to come. And he is uh, complaining about um, uh, some demons that have haunted his kitchen. You know this place um, to be a hangout uh, for the ninth void. So I think we establish them as the criminal element in the city. So you are expecting some trouble. Uh, the good news is that you know a big, strong person who carries an ax or two or three uh, on his person. Uh, so maybe you've invited gentleman you along with you just as a little bit of backup there. Does that sound, does that situation sound reasonable? Yeah. Yep. And yeah. I would really like to hear the conversation maybe just leading up to this where you've asked gentleman you to accompany you to this. What does that sound like? So I think when I when I show up to you, I'm kind of trying to um, couch it and not, you know, bury the lead a little bit. Be like, hey, uh, you, uh -huh, I get it, you, because you're, uh, I, was, I, I, was, I was wondering, you, you ever eat at the, uh, the dumpling den? Not in some years. Oh, that's a shame. I hear, you know, great specials, great specials. Also, um, I'm kind of getting paid to be there. So I was wondering if, uh, if you could join me. Would I be getting paid to be there? I'll pay you in dumplings. I think you can do better than that. Uh, okay, well, you're really, uh, really push a hard bargain, but if that's what it takes to not get beaten up by the uh, ninth void. I guess I'll take that. The ninth void. Well, you know, they're they're pretty common there, and I'm not exactly a, I'm sorry, not exactly a rough and tumble sort of guy. And you've come to me for the rough and tumble. More or less. And you know, company while I'm eating dumplings. When do we leave? Uh, I realized watches are probably anachronistic, so I don't do the looking down at my watch thing, but. Sun. Um, Is there a sundial nearby? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look out into the yard. Chen, Chen definitely wants you to come maybe before the evening rush. So I'm thinking this is kind of like not quite dinner time, but a little bit after lunch time. Okay. Yeah. It's, a, it's a little bit short notice. If, if you've got any errands you want to run, as long as we're on the way, maybe we could knock those out. But I was thinking maybe we could head over there right about, you know, quarter after now. Very well. Um, gentlemen, you have you encountered the Ninth Void? before i think so they've had some some run-ins he's not scared but he's uh cognizant what what's the relationship like between the golden mantis uh order and the ninth void i think they largely run in separate circles so the golden mantis sticks to the forest and the trails and the ninth void is in the city but they they have a respect for each other okay even though Ninth Void is kind of criminal and you are more kind of on the side of justice, that sort of... Oh, side of justice depends who you ask. That's true. That is fair. That is fair. Um, uh, so uh, I'm imagining the Dumpling Den is in actually a fairly busy part uh, of the city. Master Chef, chef Chen is a uh, very well-known um, chef. Uh, he has multiple restaurants. The Dumpling Den was sort of what put him on the map, uh, but he's since opened up many other uh, restaurants. Uh, I personally am based in the Washington, D.C. area, and we have a chef, uh, Jose Andres, 
who is very famous <laughs> here in the DC area and now the world. Um, so that's- And his first that's restaurant was famously haunted. I'm sorry? And his first restaurant is famously haunted. Yes, exactly, exactly. That's why we don't go there anymore. Um, uh, so um, so uh, Master Chef uh, Chen is not actually the person who greets you uh, at uh, the door, but um, the, the sort of person who runs you know, the front uh, greets you at the door um, and asks, uh, do you have a reservation? Uh, Mr. Master Chef actually uh, asked for me to be here. Asked you to be here? Um, what's I'm that? here for the uh, the Iritspe Oblum Prey. Um, 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 okay, just keep your voice down. It's clear that even though you're between meals, there's some folks uh, here. Um, uh, tables are not full, but maybe it's more full than you thought it would uh, be. Uh, and the host leads you uh, to the to the back. Uh, let's paint the scene a little bit uh, here. Uh, there's some very distinct uh, decor in this restaurant uh, that uh, people come for the decor as much as they come for the food. So Bao, what sort of stands out to you about the decor of this restaurant? I think it's because it was his first restaurant, it was something that he wanted to have um, kind of like a um, airs of being a fancy place, but it, it originally wasn't. So there's kind of this facade of things that are, you know, maybe gilded or they, they look like rarities, but they're mostly just cheap plaster. Um, I think it's a lot of, um, not a lot of stuff hanging on the walls, like it's not cluttered, but there's a few things here and there. Um, that are supposed to like convey class, uh, maybe some like ceremonial swords or uh, some some pottery from faraway lands. I also feel like um, Master Chef Chen sort of feels like he he is sort of a creative genius. So he decorates all of his restaurants, but um, the talent he has for food does not extend uh, to uh, decor. Um, I love that. Um, and um, uh, I think there's live music uh, playing. You, what, what kind of uh, live music do you hear playing? What's, what, what's sort of the, the vibe that the music is setting? Well, I think to kind of tie things oh, together. I'm sorry, gotta... I'm asking Drew. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry about no, that. No, you, you. You, um, you, right? Uh, if that's going to be a problem, we can we can change the name still. I think it's fun. Okay, cool. Um, so I think it's a uh, little bit like the equivalent of of adult contemporary. Like it's just it's inoffensive. It's beige music, uh, but it's um, like no one's going to remember it at all but it's just loud enough that it makes conversation a little awkward. Oh yeah. Maybe that's why the Ninth Void likes hanging out here is they can have their private conversations without being overheard. Is this a big band? Is it one person? Is it five people? What do you think? I think a uh, small band, four people, a couple different instruments. Sweet. Um, you're brought back uh, to the kitchen and uh, Master Chen, um, is, uh, is there, he's kind of tall and lanky, um, maybe, uh, some wispy facial hair, uh, dressed in kind of an oversized, uh, chef's, uh, uniform, um, and he's shouting at, uh, people in the kitchen, um, and he, you, as you arrive, one of the, um, sous chefs kind of goes off uh, to get something and he shouts at the sous chef and says, no, no, not back there. Don't go back there. Um, and um, uh, he turns to look at you all and he says, what do you want? Uh -huh, I get it because he's, he, uh, oh, never mind. Uh, I'm here about your, uh, the problem. You called in the, the contractor to deal with probably whatever's in that back room, I'm guessing. Ah, uh, yes. Mr. Bao, is it? That's the name. You come highly recommended, or mostly recommended, somewhat recommended. 
um, uh, please uh, come with me. Um, and he uh, shuffles uh, bow uh, to the back uh, area. You, are you joining? Are you hanging back? What do you, what do you do? I think he's, uh, he's joining. He'll have cast a, a look or two at bow to be like, you know, what, what did you get me into? <laughs> Sweet. Um, uh, and he's like, this is our refrigeration uh, room. And uh, when I went to check on it, on some of the ingredients this morning, I noticed things had been consumed, eaten straight through without defrosting it or cooking it properly first. Um, I uh, don't see any way anyone entered, so it could only have been a spirit. Is that, is that something you can help me with? Well... I'll have to take a look around and see see exactly what we're dealing with. It could be any number of ghouls or demons or and I think he's kind of just, you know, poking in between ingredients as he's saying this, but um He's he hasn't opened the door yet. So I think Oh, okay. Do, my in my imagination, what he does is he sort of pulls open the door and shoves you in and closes the door behind you. Does that seem fair? Would that be okay <laughs> to do that? Yeah, that, that sounds about, and for a penny, and for a pound. Okay, nice. Um, uh, gentlemen, you, how do you react to this? Would he be itching in, in this area? Would he be what? His scar, would it be irritating oh, him? Oh yeah, oh good call, yes. There is uh, massive itching. Is that how it manifests itself? I think so. Yeah, he's just kind of like, like, yeah, <laughs> kind of pulling out his shirt a little. Uh, uh, Jen says to you, "Are are you okay?" I believe you have a spirit problem. Yeah, that's why I called you. Do you do you want to go in there too? I suppose I was called for the rough and tumble. Uh, he opens the door and kind of gestures for you uh, to to go in. Uh, I'm kind of picturing you see the spirit in all its glory, sort of actually what popped into my head was the original Ghostbusters where you kind of show up and there's the big spirit uh, in the room. Um, any suggestions as to what the spirit is? In my head, I've kind of got this image of just like, a dark tornado with eyes and arms coming out that have claws. Like it's not a very definite form, but it's something kind of that looks chaotic in nature. Okay, awesome. Uh, we'll call it a chaos spirit. And it's kind of like grabbed onto a hunk uh, of pork and, um, uh, and is gnawing on something and it kind of looks up at you as you enter the room and it uh, drops uh, the frozen pork and its eyes get bigger and it gets really excited. Uh, to or it gets kind of revved up uh, to see you, um, Joe. What are you asking, uh, gentlemen? You as a move, eerie moon and evil star. Uh, when you enter a place tainted by a supernatural presence, now or in the recent past, roll. Does that trigger? Love it. Um, yeah. Why don't we pause on that? I'm going to come to the other two now. Oh, so okay. Leave you all in that cliffhanger. And I will come to uh, Zia and Jen. Here's what I imagined for you. Um, the Physicians of Grace are having a benefit concert. Uh, all the royalty has been uh, invited. Uh, and of course, Zia Fong is the star performer. Um, and um, I, I, you two um, know each other i think because zia is in love with jim yep yep so i got a uh, roll right does that does that scenario sound okay yeah no, oh, of course it's fine so i want to hear how jim invites zia to play at this concert jim hmm. would come up with a uh, a written invitation Uh, to wherever uh, she she knows Zia is uh, staying at at any time at the moment. And what do you say in this invitation? Oh, in the invitation, uh, 
uh, you were cordially invited to provide entertainment on behalf of the Physicians of Grace and their benefit and, and perform for, for the, the, nob the uh, gathered nobility. Nice. Uh, Zia, how, does, how do you respond? What do, when you receive this invitation, what is this? Bring up. Like, all right, our physician. And it's signed. Today. It's signed, Jin. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> that's that's like, Jin marker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's when it's like, all right, I don't know, Jin has right, okay. very, um, her writing is very uh, staid. It's not very like artistic, but it's very stark and it's very, um, but very uh, clear and very fine. Precise. Precise. Yes. Yeah, she it. has very precise writing. But she just like, oh. Well, okay, uh, so uh, yeah. yeah, Jin's then, not one to, to go herself to such places. It's just the way that's just not the way she is. <laughs> well, you send the postal. That's right. The messengers. It's understandable. You're uh, not. You're not so, part of the peasantry. So Zia, do you do you provide a written response? Of course, so yeah, I'm a what is that? respectable, uh, respect, respectable woman of some renown. Yeah, I mean, I think like entertainers. Well, I know in like Japanese culture of that time period, entertainers were like highly respected. Right. So yeah. I don't know how it works with China, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make it up and say they are. Yeah, I'm also they imagining are. that they would be. You yourself don't receive the letter, but maybe one of your people is reading it. To you, like your manager or someone who's reading it, you know your agent, your agent. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I'm not so removed from the the low people that I have an agent. I okay. I will. I accept. I I receive up because, like I said, I travel a lot on the roads on my own. <laughs> You, you handle actually, all of your own stuff. Yeah, it's actually that's probably how they got to know each other. Is they probably traveled together at one point or another. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe I got injured in the middle of a thing because something happened and you were, you know, you know, you're a physician. So just happened to be there. Yep. What's going yeah. through your head when you receive this invitation? Well, yeah, as I'm saying, I'm like, all right, go. Okay. Ah, the ability. It's when I see the, the, the seal, I'm like, Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, then I have to go draft a response. You know, from, I would be, honored to perform and it's very flowery uh and it's like and I, and i look forward to seeing you again uh on the, the glorious day of date the year of our whatever <laughs> magnificence uh, so i'm imagining so like you know corresponding from afar that's the easy part Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. This that doesn't like. I'm like, all right. That doesn't make me have to roll dice. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> uh, we're we're getting to the intercom. Yeah. Um, so I'm imagining I, uh, the venue is called the Garden of Harmony, mm -hmm. and um, um, this is a really nice, nice. This is maybe the most upscale venue. This is like the Lincoln Center of <laughs> whatever city this is. Um, so, um, Zia, what is it about this venue that you like so much? What makes it so good for the performing musician? Oh, I think it's, uh, I think it's just the gardens. Like, it's just like, it brings, it brings a tranquil harmony to the area. It's easier to focus on the music. The, the, the scent of the blossoms blossoming lotus lotus is blossoming i don't i'm, I'm not a horticulturist so um and uh jen the seats is, in this venue are arranged in a really interesting way how are the seats arranged in this venue um uh, by um probably um noble importance of course um with the the princess and then the uh, you know the royal family basically a center stage center, and then um, their attending physicians, of course, on either side of them. This is the physicians of grace, um, 
and then probably the uh, across, I imagine like across from the royal family is the probably the uh, the ranking, the ranking members of the physicians um, on the other side. Um, and then the, kind of everybody else kind of fills around. Um, what, why are they doing this fundraiser? Is there something in particular that uh, is top of mind for the Physicians of Grace? Is there kind of an immediate need? Is this just an annual fundraiser? Um, what do you think? I'd say it's to um, support the, uh, efforts uh, to um, kind of maintain their, uh, I imagine it's an annual thing where they kind of maintain their, so they can maintain their um, charity to all uh, in the, in the names, in the names of physicians. And it kind of looks, it's kind of like a publicity thing. Cause you know, it's uh, the, uh, the physicians are great. It's like to maintain that they serve, you know, the, the nobility and the poor and uh, you know, and then it's, it's the, this, these fundraisers that help fund that that charity love it it also feels like maybe this is specifically to fund those physicians who go traveling around yes and serve everyone else across yes. the land uh so there's sort of that political mm -hmm. angle uh but it's also specific to you jim because that's that's what she does your bad <laughs> yes um uh kind of a physicians without borders uh type mm -hmm. Um, intermixed with like secret societies, yes. Right, sure. Um, <laughs> Joe, how do you feel about describing your performance? Is that something you feel comfortable doing? You want to give? Uh, we're just gonna gloss over that. You could probably gloss over it. Should I roll <laughs> for impressing? Oh, like, I like that. Yeah, because that that's a move that doesn't happen often. I know that much. <laughs> it doesn't. When I act to impress others, I definitely want to impress Jin. <laughs> like. I mean, yes, there's also a whole other audience, but I really want to impress to, you know, she personally invited me to right. requested my performance. Right. Jin, so. where are you sitting in this seating? Are you kind of uh, um, important one? Are you sitting further back or? She's, uh, well, she, Jin is, is uh, in love with the princess and Jin has done her best to kind of stay as close as possible. The other end of that though, is that she's also in the city for her sister. So she's probably either at one or the other, uh, at wherever she, that they'll, they'll kind of set her basically. <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering if um, Jian is not there. Okay. But I also feel like, uh, given the fact that we express our feelings obliquely in this game, yep. you're not like the teenage boy who's trying to sit next to the girl you have a crush no. on. No. Uh, actually, I see Jin on the other side uh, with uh, sitting with the rest of the physician, like the, the physician leaders inside. Do you mean, do you mean Shu, Princess Shu? Yeah. Princess okay. Shu's on one side. I can see Jin kind of across the way, kind of so she can look like at Princess Shu across I see, the I way. See. <laughs> I see. Cool. Kind of cleverly. Well, yes. All right. I want to see the outcome of this impress roll. Yeah. Ooh, I do too. Joe, did so, you find our dice? Yep. Where's, uh, where's the impress move? Is that a, a on basic move? Oh, I see it. I see it. Okay. Cal yep. Calamy 078. Uh, when you act to impress others or succeed at a competition, describe your performance and role. So I'm playing like they got that, I don't know what it's called still, the big layout guitar thing that I play like running my getting, fingers over the strings. Getting, rather the, than, getting the big instrument out, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, this is that like <laughs> yes. a, a fancy performance. It's not like me mm -hmm. just going to the tea house. Uh, and so like, you know, I'm like, I'm going like, my, my hair is like co going wild as I like get deep into it and like just like, you know, blasting the notes into the crowd. Uh, let's hope this goes well as I'm trying to strike out to make everyone uh, basically make them cry as they, they feel the uh, the love of the, the melody that like is hidden within the music. The, the, the longing. Fearing. Um, teaching it, someone specific you use hearts and minds yeah this is for everyone like i'm oh. trying to impress people oh, okay but okay it, yeah did you have a specific goal in mind besides just moving them uh 
or create bonds <laughs> or gain favors like this is the mechanical option of like yeah like like uh you know i was invited to do this thing i'm gonna do this thing and i'm gonna make sure people talk about me and want to talk to me you know perfect yeah uh fire i'm probably using fire because okay. i'm being very passionate as uh try to hit them with my music love it so 2d6 plus two uh, do we know. write roll our own dice? Uh, I wasn't sure. I'll uh, put a link to the dice roller in the chat room. And uh, okay. Let's just right. um, let's pause for a sec. So, uh, uh, have you used one of these before, chat? Uh, not this one, no. Yeah. So this is uh, spend any time with the gauntlet, and you will find that people have uh, their favorite uh, online dice rollers. Uh, some go in and out of favor. So this is the uh, the latest one, and it's actually made by someone in the Gauntlet uh, community. Oh, cool. Um, so, um, yeah. So uh, if you uh, enter your name or your character's name, uh, what's cool about this is that you can name the role. Um, so if you... Oh, it's kind of uh, like World 20. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. So you can uh, mm -hmm. you'll type uh, 2D6 for your role modifier, which is towards the bottom of the screen. Um, you can enter your ability oh, score, cool. and then you can call it roll with fire or whatever the name of the move is. So I've just done a roll. Oh, neat. So see the OK. Cool, cool, cool. So uh, yeah. Z, I'm, not, I'm not seeing your plus two. Did you add fire? Well, I didn't type it in. I just, oh, okay. I just keep it in mind. I never type in the modifier. Just roll the dice. Remember, your, dice, look up your yeah. modifier. Love it. All right. So you rolled uh, a nine. Yep. Right. On a hit, you impress and convince. Pick two options. Create a bond, clear an element, or gain a favor. On a seven nine, the GM will offer you a complication or hard choice. Use. All right. Yeah. Uh, this is a layout problem that I have. But like, use this move for public gatherings or explicit or implicit competition, like artistic performance, etc. So that's why I'm like, yeah, this move works perfect for that. Yep. Uh, Mm -hmm. So I want to create a bond with Jin, and uh, do I want to gain a favor or create a second bond with someone else? Uh, so Jin goes up to two. Uh, I will gain a favor. I don't know from who, but I want a favor from someone. <laughs> interesting so i'll leave that and also seven or nine you will you get your you get your fun oh yeah um <laughs> so uh one idea i have is that it turns out you are not the main event um <laughs> and that uh, someone else comes on and kind of shows you up another possible complication is that you see Someone in the crowd that Autumn Fox was supposed to have apprehended. Oh, that one. Ooh, that's good. All right. I mean, it's like that. So uh, I just didn't know how far we were leaning into the musician thing. Um, yeah, so um, mm -hmm. it is probably a noble who had been doing, because that's who gets invited, probably had been doing, engaged in some shady uh, things. And Autumn Fox, it was just last week uh, that you caught him um, red-handed doing what? Oh, um, let me look at the lines of veils real quick. I'm so far away. All right. <laughs> um, let's see. No, no, no. Uh. I want to say, okay, uh, they were uh, trying to think, smuggling a good, like, like, I want to, like, uh, some, like, because, like, like, they're using the peasantry to, like, smuggle, and, like, they were, like, re he was probably, like, smuggle, uh, like, uh, drugs or something illicit. I was, th I was thinking, like, illicit material. Okay. Uh, 
but like but it was really like that he was abusing like the the peasants like the poor mm-hmm. people that have nowhere else to turn but work for him uh making them extortion um, yes extortion i like that that's Sh- so that's shaking, better shaking people down yes. yes yeah uh maybe taking uh, a cut of stuff like that's arrived des- in the port. destroying their stuff as well all right like uh their personal property just being a jerk yeah you know he's a landlord type uh, guy you a so you jerk. observe uh this how does that affect your performance oh uh i think that like it gets my performance gets a bit more intense okay. as like you know i'm getting angrier <laughs> it is with fire sense yeah sense um and i feel like um while all of that is going down um Jin, you notice uh that princess shu is no longer sitting in her seat that she's sort of gotten up and in fact when you um come to realize it she's actually taking a seat right next to you <laughs> so you see uh Jin kind of sit up straighter um Jen does not smile. Jen very rarely smiles. Uh, that's her sister. That's how you can tell the difference. <laughs> um, Might have to roll first. <laughs> but um, she, uh, yeah, she sits up straighter and um, kind of um, tries to make sure that she's, you know, very proper and very um, reserved. You know, so, so she kind of locks up. You know, she kind of puts on the ice cold. <laughs> Well, and I feel like you are experiencing what this game uh, emotional conflict. Yes, yeah. conflict. we'll see. We'll see how well that holds up. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, um, uh, it's definitely metal. Yes. Well, hang on. So you get to mark XP automatically. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. And then you can roll anything except your style element. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. shit. No, you can never roll style on in inner conflict. You on, only roll style on duels. On right. So which element are you going to roll with so you don't roll your style They're the same element that's your style right okay. your style in your case is metal so right you roll any of the other four elements she's going to roll earth um yeah, for focus. presence yeah. focus presence you know she's kind of uh um and I will roll. Let's see. So it's two d six. This is interesting. Two d six. Roll modifier is one. Um, uh, Earth presence. Oh, nicely done. Inner conflict. Oh, wow. Roll the ten. Well, that's. Um, so you managed to keep yourself together. So you were describing this kind of very cold, uh, facade, right? Mm -hmm. Very, uh, yeah, very kind of, um, kind of emotionless, but yet proper and, and, and reserved. Um, uh, Jin leans, uh, excuse me, Shu leans over to you and says, I understand we have you to thank for, uh, such a, a lovely performance that you you were the one who invited uh, Zia to perform for us. Is that correct? Yes, Your Highness. Uh, I, uh, I've uh, Zia and I have Zia and I have traveled uh, many a road together. Uh, well, I am uh, very uh, very grateful. Though uh, I think at this point your performance is getting more intense because you've noticed the person, and <laughs> maybe she says something like, "I." I haven't heard the piece performed with quite this much gusto uh, ever. Is this, uh, are, are you familiar with this piece of music? Hmm. Zaya has always been a very uh, excitable performer. That's part of her appeal. But um, I, this is a variation on something I've seen she's done before. <laughs> nice, good recovery. Um, I think um, the performance is about to come to an intermission. Um, Zaya, are you 
how do you want to handle um, this person? Um, Should we give them a name? Uh, uh, Got it. Um, magnanimous uh, Wong. Let me go to which name. I, the thing that popped up was Defiant Beaver. So I feel like that's what it's got to be. So, um, what, what do you... Uh... So like, I'm, like I said, as I'm getting angry, the, the performance is getting angry and more volatile. And then like it builds to a crescendo. So like I quote unquote pass out over top the thing for like the climax of the piece. Wow. And that's why, you know, I have to be... I have to go recuperate. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Love it. Um, uh, so you you have now gone backstage. There's an intermission. What is your plan to deal with Defiant Beaver? Oh, uh, it's just like turn the clothes inside out. <laughs> Mask on. Yep. <laughs> That's really uh, smart, you know. It's not you have to change to a whole other costume. It's just, yeah. it's just like it's reversible clothes, baby. You can just see it, see it, kind of like like flipping, flipping, flipping their robes, and all yep. of a sudden now they have the mask on and the whole thing. One of my favorite parts about this genre is that is the principle that masks work until they don't. So yes. it doesn't even matter exactly what the costume is. Yes. Uh, so let's pause on that and let's come back to our freezer. Um, <laughs> uh, Bow, gentlemen, you, what do you, uh, you've got a chaos demon. So I think um, that uh, Joe pointed out that you does have an ability that. Oh, right. Yeah. There. Let's resolve that. Okay. That was uh, Eerie Moon and Evil Star. Yep. Yes. Eight. What did you roll with out of curiosity? Which element? Uh, sorry, this is all very new to me. You're doing um, great. Fine. So I would say he did water. Okay, so you rolled wisdom. Up. Yeah. Oh, so okay. When we, whenever it says roll, you declare which element you're going to use. So in this case, you'll say I will roll with water, <clears throat> and then you can narrate. <clears throat> so um, what is Eerie Moon and Evil Star look like when it is affecting you? How does the perception occur? I think that his scars glow okay. when he gets uh, exposed to an otherworldly force. Okay. So just a soft blue glow under his, uh, under his shirt. Is that something that he can see through his clothing or... Does he feel it as well? Probably what he's wearing now, yeah. Okay. And it says you can ask a study question. So if you go to the basic moves tab, on the lower right is the study uh, move. So you can ask one of those questions there. Okay. I feel like we understand its uh, motivations. It's hungry, um, but let's say, could, could I ask of its intentions? Um, sure. Um, let's see, what could its intentions be besides to sate itself? Um, I think it's been conjured. I think a, a rival of uh, Master Chef Chen has conjured this sucker uh, to create turmoil and uh, undermine his restaurant. So you you understand its intention to be to create chaos in okay. uh, in in this area um, or in the in the restaurant. How do you uh, do you how do you perceive that? Like what what happens between you and the demon, or between you and the scar? That kind of triggers this insight maybe like a uh 
in any good TV show, just a Vaseline coated flashback, just quickly run through his head. Okay, so he sort of pictures like the conjur conjuration. Right. Maybe the, the identity of the person is obscured, but you get the sense that, that they've been, okay, cool. Yeah. How do you communicate that to about? Very quickly, I think just someone's conjured this to ruin uh, Chef Shen. I think that Bao um, is, it, it kind of falls on deaf ears. He's eyes locked with this thing, like, holy crap, because this is the first time he's actually seen <laughs> really? a real spirit in real life. Yep. Um, and he, he quickly, like, unslings his bag, and he's, like, digging through it, trying to find that, that one jar of the actual good spirit water. Nice. Um, I know he's got to move to... to uh, try to bar uh, or create a barrier to expel the spirit. I don't know if this would be more interesting if I did like an inner conflict first because of that that fear. Oh, interesting. Um, I was I, uh, sure if you want to, we can we can do inner conflict. Um, tell me what's going through Bao's head that's creating this inner conflict. I think it's just that that you know, instinct of seeing this thing that is very much not natural that I had at this point thought was was not real. I don't know. I don't know if that would be, if that's quite what inner conflict is for in this game. Because um, I'm, I'm thinking of almost, I guess I'm thinking of it as like an act under fire. But if the general. It's not quite like that. No. I don't think. It's yeah, like, I... you're doing like, oh shit, my emotions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and my perception of I, one of the reasons why I like how you brought this up is my perception of Bao is that he is hopelessly insecure about his abilities. Maybe I maybe I read you wrong, but if that's the case, then personal issue I think is a pretty good description of his insecurities. Okay, so, yeah, I think I'll roll with that because okay. I think that'll be more interesting than just it shows up and then I banish it. Right. Um. So you mark an XP. For dealing with those let me let's see um and then you pick an element to rule with that's not your style element. oops sorry that's that's the, that is the wrong one <laughs> and there. i think I think I'm gonna have to go with, um, I don't know. it's not patience, it's not. I think this would either be metal or fire. Metal because I'm trying to keep control of myself or fire because I'm trying to do this quickly. Okay, well, you um, might go with the better roll, so. Yeah, I don't wanna, I don't wanna metagame it though. It's fine. I think, I think because of that reason, <laughs> I'm gonna go with metal. Just uh, just to see. It's your role. Go for it. Yeah. I mean, if I fail, it just creates more more conflict. That's interesting, mm -hmm. right? More drama. That's yeah. right. More drama. What do we got? We got a nine. Hmm. Uh, okay, great. Uh, okay. So with that inner conflict, um, you must flee the scene or mark an element. If you mark an element, then you may not use it for rolling. It's very clear. So, are I think you going to flee the freezer and leave poor gentleman you to deal with the chaos demon <laughs> or mark an element? Either one of those things will be very interesting for me. I think I do want to want to flee the flee the room <laughs> just because <laughs> it creates this great <laughs> scene of me running screaming back into the session. <laughs> I love it. It's like that's the ghost buster why is he running from the ghost <laughs> but and the fact that I, I brought you to deal with the gangsters so that i could handle the ghost stuff right and now you stuck in there with the ghost and i'm out here with the gangsters um what element are you marking <laughs> oh do i mark an element if i run away oh no I I was... yes you ran away since uh, run away or mark yeah. um um uh i do kind of want to uh dwell on that scene a little bit and what does that look like when you kind of push past gentleman you to get out of here i think that's kind of the the 
screw it, this is not what I signed up for, and trying to um, like shoulder past him and grabbing the handle and like fumbling with the handle on the door, you know, for a second, like ah, 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 before. Um, and it's it's you can see that he Bao uh, is very much like shaken. This is not his proudest moment, right? But he has he is. Um, like sweating, even though he's in this cold freezer. Like there is definitely like sweat beating and he freezes up for a moment and then freaks out, you know, and goes through that whole sequence of shouldering past and trying to drain this door open. Now we keep our emotions bottled up in this game. So my question to you is uh, fear is an emotion. So what excuse are you making to you? How are you explaining um, to him? I think because I'd already set up that I was looking for the spirit water, I, I, that's my, oh, I, uh, I, I don't have what I need. I, I, def, I do not have what I need. I must, I must gather my supplies. I was not prepared for a spirit of this magnitude. <laughs> uh, well done. Uh, gentlemen, you. you, it's just you and the chaos team. How do you feel about, uh, about Val leaving? What is that? What is what is the impact on you? I feel like it's not an incredible surprise to you. Like, um, he's disappointed, but not not. Uh, he's not mad. Shocked. Just disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> makes me so happy. Um, uh, what are you doing with the cast team? Uh, well, I have an axe. You do have an axe. I think I think uh, he's gonna do what he does with with other obstacles. Um. Okay. Um. In just a sec. I'm looking at face the supernatural, which feels different. I have no expectation it will work. Yeah. Um. I think this is. Uh, a straight up duel. Um, so, uh, one of the things I love about this game is um, this idea of scale. And the idea is very simple, it's completely abstract. I don't keep a number of scale, like, I don't know what the thing's scale score is. We just think is this thing better than you? Is it an even match, or is it not as strong as you are? Um, and uh, that basically determines the outcome. The amount of narration that you get to do is really what the die roll uh, determines. Um, what's cool is once you've faced someone of a higher scale, that triggers an opportunity for you to do some uh, studying or other things to kind of learn how to uh, improve yourself. So um, I feel, well, I don't know, gentlemen, you, have you faced demons like this before? Is this something that you're familiar with? Is this completely new to you? How are you reacting? I feel like maybe not a not a chaos demon of, of this sort, but I think in the in the forest, in the the hidden places of the, the woods, he's bumped into things that were not of the normal plane. Right. Imps and nymphs and things like that, like smaller versions of this, but maybe not so not a demon per se. Is that something? Right. All right, well, I'm gonna say, um, uh, let's do it like this. Let's say um, uh, the foe is of your scale. You are, you are the same scale as this, just to see what that feels like. Um, so um, why don't we uh, resolve this combat? So now you would roll plus your style element and if you're looking at the basic mood sheet, uh, we're looking at the thing that's on row five. The foe is your scale. Um, so um, before you roll, why don't you tell me what your, what does your style look like in action? What does the way of the tree cutter look like when you're fighting someone or something? I think it is uh, very functional, not um not a showy style, it's it's to the point, as it were. Um, but there's a grace to it. He is he is practiced and, and there's very little hesitation. Love it. Uh, oh, is is the axe a two-handed axe? Is it a one-handed axe? What is the 
I think it's a it's a two handed axe, a good a good one. He has smaller ones, maybe uh, on his person. He wasn't expecting to need right. too much today, but yeah. uh, you need in a dumpling shop, nothing. Exactly. Um, is the, is this axe special in some way? Does it have inscriptions on it? Is it is there a specific design? I think it is his axe, and he has had it for many years, and it is worn in all the the ways to make it familiar and comfort, comfortable. Nice. Um, so why don't you roll with your style element? So that's wood. So lovely. Eleven. So on a 10 plus, you win and may mark XP if you show them mercy or let them escape. You may uh, declare a shift uh, in the fiction, change of heart, impress someone, shift an entanglement. So what happens? I think he, he comes in with, with one good swing and maybe the, the demon is as surprised by this as they were of it or by it. Um, and it's it's like a like a dust devil kind of thing, like a tornado it's, with yep. eyes. With eyes and claws. And claws. Can't forget the claws. Yeah. And a big mouth. Right. And a gaping maw that likes to eat frozen pork. Right. <laughs> I think um, he gets the axe right in the side of its maw and, and kind of leaves it dangling by ectoplasmic threads or, or whatever. Love it. Does it dissipate? Does it flee? Does it, is it dead? Uh, I don't think it's dead. I think it would need more than an axe to, to fully kill it. But uh, yeah, I think it, it dissipates and it's at least gone for now. Okay. Um, how do you, how does this make you feel? Like, are you surprised? Are you unimpressed with yourself? Like, what is the, what's the vibe? I think he's, he's surprised that worked. Nice. And uh, yeah, he's he's kind of just standing there with with the axe and the looking at the hunk of meat. Like, did that? Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, I'm going to come to um, bow. Master Chef is uh, Jen is standing right there when you come through the door. He's like, I'm sorry, this. This seems so much like Ghostbusters. I don't, was not thinking even we were going to end up here, but here we are. So uh, Master Chef Chen is like, um, did you get it? Did you get rid of it? Well, you see, in, in complicated cases like these, you see the demons can be uh, difficult to remove. It can take many steps and lots of, and I basically just keep stalling like this and speaking very circuitously about how you know, it could take a while to resolve the issue, and I need to do more research. Uh, and just completely BSing to, to try to save face. It feels like hearts and minds. Let's go. When you pressure um, someone susceptible to your words, say what you're trying to get them to do and roll. So what are you trying to get him to do? I am trying to get him to stop questioning me. <laughs> um, and I'm going to say fire because I am creatively bullshitting. Okay. Um, so let's roll. I did it. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> The gentleman, you rolled a 20, apparently. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> hmm. Oh, I think I put add to current roll because yes. I thought that was for the modifier. Um, oh, that and, uh, oh, okay. That is a complete okay. fail. I didn't even know that was an option. Hmm. Oh, look at you. And what's... Uh, uh, oh, what's... I marked XP, right? Uh, not on hearts and minds. Oh. Uh, 
Oh, you mean for rolling a six for, for failing? That's Dan's choice. Yeah, um, you do not. Uh, XP is gathered not through failed rolls, uh, but uh, whether you engage with your entanglements. At the end. Okay. Yeah. And uh, but which uh, which element were you rolling? I was rolling. Uh, roll five. modifier one. Okay, I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, so. oh, I thought yeah. you rolled the six, then it would be the plus one. But yeah, right. now you, um, yeah, you're on top of your own roll. I get you. Uh, am I am I marking that? You do uh, not element? mark an element. No, no. Um, it's only when you kind of suffer damage, or usually it's it's fair, it's expressed in the in the move. But I do get to make a hard move, um, and um, I think uh, they. The ninth void folks hear you talking, and um, uh, they kind of all push their chairs back, and they've heard a rumor of a person who's been pulling fast ones on folks around the neighborhood who are under their protection, uh, and so you are now surrounded by, let's call it a gang of five, six. Six uh, mooks, I believe, or troops, they call them in this one, um, uh, from the Ninth Void. And we're going to pause on that storyline because uh, I cannot wait to hear what happens when Gentleman Mew comes out of the freezer, super excited <laughs> that he injured a demon, only to find surrounded by people that may be trying to hurt him. Uh, I want to let's set up the next uh, scene here. Um, so Intermission has happened. Um, uh, Zaya, you are in your uh, green room, dressing room. Yep, dressing room, changing room. Yeah, changing room. You have swapped into. Yeah, yeah like, I'm like, I need to rest after such an exhausting performance. And then, how does how <laughs> Autumn Fox manage to get out of the dressing There's room? There's a window. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> like it's the sliding it's street. Window. It's not like modern time. It's like you know, paper window slide. Right, right. It's yeah, it's just a sliding panel. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what do you do? Where do you go? Uh, you know, like right in the middle of the intermission, uh, a dagger lands right between this dude's uh, feet. Feet as oh. I I do the Sailor Moon entrance. Uh, <laughs> So Those that prey upon uh, the innocent and the weak, uh, subjugating to their will, uh, criminal uh, scum, you will be dealt with by Autumn Fox. <laughs> um, and um, def Defiant Beaver, I can't believe we landed there. Defiant Beaver is like, um, <laughs> what are you talking about? Who are you? How dare you uh, interrupt me and throw weapons so close to the princess and his highness, the emperor? How dare you? Guards, seize her. Brought this upon myself. So. At the uh, outburst, um, uh, Jin stands up uh, in kind of defense of the, the princess who's sitting right next to her. I think you're all milling about, oh, kind of in the garden. Right? Oh, we're oh, we're oh, this is after rat, so we're yeah, all yeah. kind of you're okay. in intermission. Yep. You're milling yep. about. Uh, everyone's kind of chattering about what happened okay. to Zaya, what happened to Zaya, uh, yeah. and then Autumn Fox shows up okay. uh, and confronts. Dramatic the entrance. Fever. Yes. Um, Accuses Jin, okay. them of criminal undertakings. Um, Jin, how do you react when you see all of this going down? She uh, kind of turns and um, kind of um, is going to. Uh, is there like an assess or a study of the situation, or is there something? Yeah, there's a study. The there's definitely a study. Study. Yeah. Okay, I, that's probably what she's going to do. That's her natural instinct to do Love so. It. Are you are you now still next to the princess? Uh, as, as, uh, yeah, she will try to linger around the princess as much as she can. Okay. Without being overly ostentatious. You don't want to be obvious, no. No. <laughs> so, but uh, she, you know, she will kind of um, float nearby if the princess kind of invites her to you know to accompany her. She will definitely accompany her. Sweet. Um, but um, right. yes. So but what? she's gonna kind of, uh, she's kind of, kind of, uh, kind of, uh, gently, uh, you know, kind of her hand reaches under her robe to where her sword is sheathed, and uh, okay. she kind of assesses the situation. Unless she's uh, unarmed, would she be unarmed in this situation? Um, my assumption is your weapon is where it needs to be. Okay. Okay. 
Yep. Um, so what, you, you would kind of assess for sure. Which element are you going to roll with? Uh, let me see. Let me, I gotta look for where's the uh, where's the assess move study? There it's it is. called study. It's on basic moves in the okay. lower right. Okay. Um, she's going to use. Probably going to use her strength here, so she's going to use metal. Great. Okay. So two d six. Two. Nice. That's a 10. So you get to ask. Um, you get to you hold, get to hold two. On a hit, you gain basic information, and then you can hold two, and then you can spend. So basic information, what is it that you were, tell me, tell me what studying looks like and what you were looking for in particular. So she's kind of uh, looking at who's involved. Um, um, you know, what, uh, who's around, you know, what the, you know, what the situation is, is there, is, you know, mainly looking for is if there's a danger here to, to the princess or any of the other honored guests. Um, and maybe, uh, probably intentions. Okay. The intentions of, of I, both actually. Um, is it, uh, uh, my assumption is that you are familiar with Autumn Fox. Maybe you haven't met formally. Or, I mean, you've <laughs> I've met. heard of yes. You know, she always seems to follow us around. But uh, what is, yes, what is <laughs> what is the uh, Autumn Fox's most famous exploit that you are aware of? Would you say, Jim? Mm. Um. Probably. Revealing, um, she probably publicly revealed a, or publicly humili humiliated a um, known warlord. Oh, nice. Zia, is that okay with you? Oh yeah, totally. Um, uh, we will have to figure out what that was at some point. Um, uh, so when you see. Autumn Fox come in, you sort of have an awareness of what mm -hmm. what her shtick is. Um, you were, uh, it seems like the princess is safe. It seems like mm -hmm. Autumn Fox has maybe even positioned herself uh, to avoid hurting anybody else. Um, you do get a vibe that um, Defiant Beaver has brought some folks with him uh, to protect him. So he's brought his own bodyguard. He's got guards, yep. And you see them closing in on uh, Autumn Fox. What do you do? She's going to kind of engage in, in like a, you know, kind of a discussion saying to try to maybe... Um, uh, she's going to move, uh, well, Jin's going to move around in a way that, and then speak. And then in doing so, get Autumn to get Autumn Fox's attention. So she's aware of what's coming at her. Does that make any okay. sense? Yeah. Kind yeah. of very, kind of very slick. And uh, she goes, Autumn Fox, these are very serious. Um, what's the word I was looking for? Um, Accusations. Yep. Do you have proof? And she, as I said, she's kind of moving. She kind of moves, kind of emerges out of the crowd, like near, like kind of in view of where these guys are coming. So uh, yeah. So you call my out my name. My eyes catch your eyes, and they go the wide. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> not now. Because <laughs> I have to roll into conflict. Uh, and never forget, you have those two holds that you can spend at any time. Yep. 
Uh, so not my style element. Oh, so you're experiencing inner conflict. Yeah, I mean, Jin, yes. the oh, woman Jin's I love, right there. calling out Autumn Fox. Like, do you have any proof? I'm like, what? what? Hello? Oh, hey. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I need control. Or do I need focus? It doesn't matter, but they're both the same. They're both zero. Uh, so I'm going with metal. I'm going to roll with metal. Uh, roll the dice. Taking after Jim. Aha! A ten. Nice <laughs> one. Don't oh, yeah, and I forgot to get the XP. Yeah. Yep, mark your XP. How do you, what does this look like maintaining your composure here? Okay, so yeah, like um, the eyes block, the eyes widen, uh, and then like I see, uh, like uh, what's his name, Defiant uh, Beaver, Defiant is, like, Beaver. is like pulling out like a blowgun, and that's when like I quick uh, toss like a needle towards him as uh, like my attention is drawn back on this 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 the scourge of the people. Um, are the are the have you? But you've not dealt with the bodyguard. No, no, you no, no. Your scurrilous ways will 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 uh, go no far farther. <laughs> nice. And uh, Jin, do you feel like you've successfully alerted uh, Autumn Fox to the? To well, as Fox doesn't seem to be, it seems oblivious to the guards which are still approaching. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, well, I mean, if you said you revealed it, uh, probably would have noticed, but I don't know. Yeah, she would you have, have control. Oh, okay. As I say, she would have moved in such a way that to pr probably try to get Autumn Fox's attention on the guards, so she's aware. Of oh them. yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, there's no question about that. You tell me, like, hey, there's guards, even subtly. I'm like, oh, I'll notice. Okay. I'm not worried about. Um, them. what is okay? I'm gonna use one of my burnt one of my uh, holds. Okay. Um, is it? Because I'm, I'm thinking, I want to assist Autumn Fox, but I want to keep it civil. And I'm trying to think of a way that uh, about the situation uh, where I can um, actually. I want to actually know if I. I want to ask a question about um, what's his name, Defiant Beaver. Yep. That's what I can do, guys. That's what it yes. is. Yeah. Um, so I want to know if if he is truly. I mean, uh, if is there a way I can discern, like, if I know his reputation, or you know, if well, I know you I'm can to... reveal a detail, and that okay. just makes it true. Okay. Or you could ask a question a bit like the options of uh, yeah. motivation. Desires, you can motivation. find ask how to control them or get a means to manipulate them. Mm -hmm. Like these are your your tool toys to it's like, all right, I've all right. got this thing. Hmm. Uh, so how can I get Defiant Beaver to um, back off his guards? as to not uh, uh, engage Autumn Fox? Uh, well, I think as long as he feels threatened by Autumn Fox, he's going to, he, he, his intent is to try and uh, right. subvert Autumn Fox. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can create some kind of diversion or distraction or lure him away from the situation. I don't know. Um, is there like a, I guess there would be a, like a mediation or a court, I guess would that, um, if there is a wrong to be right, wrong that needs to be righted here, we should do it under, under the proper means. There's no wrong. I am a member of the nobility. I have been an upstanding citizen. This Autumn Fox, whoever she might be, is the true enemy. She is. You have been 
abusing the people you claim to protect. You've been extorting the people of this uh, city. And when brought to justice, you have bought your way out of, uh, out of, uh, uh, ju uh, of judgment by paying off the judges. This will stand no further. Again, again, As I, uh, false accusation. I'm trying to uh, pressure Jin. I'm trying to hearts and minds Jin. <laughs> uh, like, this guy is super corrupt. <laughs> He's abusing the people and paying off the courts. <laughs> like, your justice is useless with uh, him. Perfect. Uh, okay. So. That Chaz, yeah. okay. That okay? Uh, I'm cool with that. That's yeah, fine. So I'm going to use my passion because I'm very fired <laughs> up. Uh, so fire. Uh, and then it's on a hit. Then Mark, okay, what am I trying to get you to do? Like That's, I guess, say what you're trying to get them to do. Uh, to summon, uh, like, arrest this man. See that justice is actually done. <laughs> do not let him use his wealth to weasel out. Yeah, I also feel like maybe Jin has the princess's ear. Yeah, little. I mean, she's right there. And yeah. I know I don't trust her, but she's still like <laughs> the boss. Yes. She's, she does have a dark secret. As as Ooh, yeah, baby. There's a five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, um, I think, this is the perfect result. Yeah, I think um, Defiant Peaver says... Um, your highnesses, please come with me. We must uh, flee uh, to be safe uh, from these vigilantes. My people will take care of them. And he escorts the princess and her entourage and the emperor out of uh, the venue and um, his uh, bodyguard emerge um, and confront uh, Autumn Fox. I guess they don't really see Jin as a threat right it's now. It's an insult. That's an insult to the physicians of grace. I mean, you seem to be on the prince's side. I don't know. Yeah. That's an insult. You dare insult by le by leaving us? He's gone. He's gone. I, he's, he's gone. Yeah. There's <laughs> the princess, too. So he's gone. That's fine. So uh, you are now dealing with troops. Okay. Uh, I'll say, I, I, so she so Jin looks at the at the incoming guards and goes, "Your master insults us by leaving. I, I assure you, you should leave as well." Um, they don't leave. Uh, okay, and then <laughs> or else. <laughs> um, I mean, you can try in hearts and minds them if you want to pressure them. Hmm. I guess. I think they are. Uh, they want to fight. Let's get. They're very. Fight. They're very loyal. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, they're really not trying to hurt you. They're just trying to uh, get you all kicked out. Oh, of our own venue. That's yes. a neat trick. Mm. Oh yeah. So um, is this um, Autumn Fox who's doing the fighting with troops? Um, uh, <laughs> I just remembered I had that other move. Which one is that? Uh, when you deliberately head off alone into a dangerous situation. Yeah, that one's fun. Yeah, I think I'm to say I Jin, might just leave you with the bodyguard and I'm like, no, I'm I'm after that guy. <laughs> 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 and like that's it's definitely dangerous because he's with the probably palace guards. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry guys. Puppy. It's okay. Everybody's being very difficult to see. Everyone in my house has been very difficult to see. Um, I'll just see. So, are you going to? Uh, yeah, run? no, I want to do that. I'm like, like, no, you, nothing. Like, you, maybe you turn to look to talk to me, and she's already leaping up over like the the wall that they went through. Awesome. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> um, I'm like throwing stuff at. Towards. So let's let's resolve uh, Jin's confrontation with the troops. Okay. We'll come to Autumn Fox's confrontation, and then maybe we will call it a night. Sounds uh, good. Uh, so, Jin, how do you want to deal with these troops? Do you want to 
or eat them to death or no she's drawing her weapon if they're not gonna if they pay no heed to her words she is drawing and going to she's going to drive them out i mean they're after autumn fox so i guess my question to you is are you stopping them are you trying to convince them to to not go to autumn like what is uh, they're they're they see autumn fox kind of scoot away and so Mm -hmm. they're gonna go follow autumn fox yeah Unless you stop them. Okay. And and somebody's definitely wondering, like, man, where did that performer go? Yeah. <laughs> She's resting. It was exhausting. Everyone saw um, her collapse. Okay. Well, I can try out. Yeah, I can try to hearts and minds them to say you are uh, in violation, you know, of, you know, you uh, basically have insulted the physicians of grace by. Yeah. And that you should, and that uh, restitution should be paid here. This could also be done as a duel of words. Oh, that's interesting. I, I kind of like the uh, hearts and minds. Mm-hmm. What do you What do you want to do, Chad? Uh, hearts and minds, I think, will work. Okay, um, that's more. That seems to be more. Uh, her the the I imagine Jin's kind of fighting style is very um, direct and precise. And so it's, you know, she's more lean, she'd rather lean on using her words and her mind before she draws. So cool. hearts and minds fits well with her, with the, the way she works. And if hearts okay. and minds doesn't work, then, you know, we'll- Then we're in trouble. See. What yes. is, what, or then we're not in trouble. What element do you want to roll with? That's a good question. Um, uh, fire, she's going with fire this time, or, um, Yeah, she's a little bit miffed because, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with fire. It's not her best attribute at all, but it's she's because nope. she's not happy that the uh, uh, defiant beaver basically took the princess away. <laughs> so you're rolling two d six minus one. Yes. <laughs> nope. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh wait, no, you'd have to spend two bonds because we have bonds. You can always spend them willy nilly. Yeah. Right. I forgot about those. Good call. But you'd have to spend two bonds to make yeah. it. Yeah, I don't have. Yeah, nobody's here, and. No, they don't need to be there. You just oh, yeah? call upon your memories of why they inspire you in this moment. Mm-hmm. I don't want to use all my. I would lose all my bonds, so I only have That's two. That's the game. That's the game. You spend them and get them. Okay. Well, I, yeah, I'll Like, I'll if spend. you really want the success, success. like, I'm, yeah. I played this, like, I'm like, I scrape by on one bond. So you okay. spend, you'd spend two bonds mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. get to a seven. Seven, yep. That's fine. I'll do that. Why not? And the, like, uh, go. the other uh what you might want to weigh versus is what the seven to nine result is versus oh that's the true. miss result what is like when the nine they can instead choose to do stuff to do they can choose stuff reveal themselves overreact hesitate or alienate What's the miss? They just don't. In the miss, they just don't. Uh, it's a hard move. Yeah, you yeah. don't know what happens. You get bad. Yeah. A lot of times, that's marking style. Whatever your element that you just rolled is. Mm-hmm. Which is why it's uh, dangerous to roll. I'll your take style. the miss. I'll take the miss. I'll take the miss. Yeah. So why did you? Why did you mark your style element? Uh, uh, I didn't mark my style element. I used. I remember. I used fire. Uh, forgive me. Uh, mark whatever element you use. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that would yeah. really suck having to mark a style element. Right oh, yeah. No, yeah. It, ha- it happens. Oh, it happens. Yeah, <laughs> it does. But yeah, she, as I said, I, I based on how she feels and right. how she right. reacted. Yeah. And she would react with passion and fire at being, in, you know, basically one insulting 
insulting the gathering by taking away the, the honored guests and to and coming in armed, you know, with armed guards. So I want to hear kind of how you tried to make this impassioned plea to the guards that then failed. What does that look like? So she 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 goes, she goes, you have no right to come in here armed to this 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 beautiful gathering and 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 not ask permission not and and then and then your master takes our honored guest from us um and they push right past you yep um and uh pursue autumn fox um autumn fox you have you are catching up to defiant beaver yep yep and you've got the um, his troops on your tail. Hey, you know, I'm sure. I'm sure Jin took care of them. Yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't she? Yeah. I mean, Jin, do you well, pursue? Jin's, Jin's a very capable yes. uh, fighter. <laughs> All right. So Jin is pursu- in pursuit. Yes. Uh, so uh, what are you doing? I have to. Well, I have to roll and mark XP uh, for my move uh, as I'm rushing in. Like, and like, come back here and face me, you. So. Uh, Quick question: uh, If I mark an element, so I marked an element. Do I mark a condition as well? No, like okay. the conditions are like prompts, uh, okay. role playing, inspiration ideas. Yes. Okay, that's cool. There is no uh, other mechanical value to them. Okay. Uh, so uh, you know, I'm probably gonna roll fire because I'm very passionate and I'm trying to catch up. You know, speed, angry, yep. like. And uh, I'm very cocky because I'm like, well, it's it's just a he's just one man. He's left his guards behind, uh, although he's got the palace guards. But they're I'm Autumn Fox. Right. <laughs> plus two. There's an eight. Plus two is a ten. <laughs> nice. All right. If you are ready for the challenge. You may take plus one forward. Yep. Um, he. Um... Uh, what does it look like when you run headlong into a dangerous situation? How, how oh, you- like I'm like doing the, I mean, it changes, varies per situation, but sure. I'm doing a lot of the rooftop running. And then like once they goes down the halls, like I'm like diving in and chasing after, uh, like I'm throwing, th- I'm like, I throw a dagger, like, you know, because I've got lots of daggers, yeah. to, like stick into his robes to pin him as like the rest of the people are going to like separate from him because he's trying to shoo the royalty away. Yes. And I'm like, I'm okay with that because now I've got, I'm in control. So it's like, get the dagger to pin his robes to to the floor. Nice. It's like there is no escape for you this time. Yeah, I think uh, they um, the royalty has kind of been shuffled off. So now Defiant Beaver is uh, on his own. Pin his robes now pins to the floor, but he kind of spins uh, to uh, look at you. Um, he draws, uh, I don't know how much I want to lean into the beaver thing, um, <laughs> but maybe he draws uh, or he sort of pulls the staff uh, off of his back. He's got a staff that's sort of like uh, just the side of a log. So, um, uh, and he turns uh, to face you. There is a glow in his eyes that seems <laughs> somewhat unnatural. Yes. Uh, are we dueling? Okay, are we dueling, or do I? What do I? What's his scale then? He's he is his scale is bigger than yours. Okay, I figured if he was supernatural, it would be automatically bigger than me, in my my opinion. Yes, I don't deal with those things. No. Yeah, so. he didn't. It didn't come out when you first confronted him. I think because he was like, "Well, I'm just going to pay off the judge." And get off of this but now he's seeing how persistent oh, you are maybe maybe he's not the real beaver i don't know <laughs> maybe not maybe yeah. he's been possessed maybe we need an exorcist or maybe he's a shift shapeshifter i know there's so many things so many things he could be but right now he's confronting you he pulls his right. rope free he whirls his uh, and his eye you said his eyes are glowing i'm like dun, dun, dun. eyes are glowing what do you do <laughs> yeah. uh well you know i got a defend myself as best i can uh so uh and he's above my scale so 
Let's see if I can narrate how I lose. Uh, water is my style element. It is a plus two, I believe. Because I went with two plus twos. And then a negative one. All right. Roll the dice. Uh, well, there's a seven. Two. Basic moves. Uh, foes above your scale. Lose the conflict. On a hit, you may declare how you lose. On seven or nine, mark an element. element. Uh, I lose bad. I lose poorly. <laughs> he is supernatural. <laughs> like, it does not go well for me. Uh, so much that like, uh, like I've got like so many like cuts, you know, my, 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 my clothes are all cut up and like, I'm bleeding and I have to run away. Cause like, Oh, I can't deal with this. This is, this is scary. Does, does his supernatural stuff, um, manifest anymore? Yes. Under yes. My- yeah. Yeah. Like it's like darkness, like the, all the lights in the, and like the candles in the hallway, like extinguished as like you know his eyes are glowing red and it's like like cold uh, a, a cold air fills the yep. area i feel like also maybe he gets a little bigger like it just you're not sure if it really happened or not but it feels like he's getting bigger yeah like um, the, the, his staff suddenly seems like an oak tree right yeah nice mm-hmm. um where uh you are, are you fleeing yeah, I'm, I gotta run away. I'm gonna, uh, I've gotta like get out of there. And uh, I mean, people are gonna find a very bruised musician passed out in her dressing room. But um, so is that where you're going? Back to yeah, you? you know, I'm like, oh god, no, I can't. Have... The show must go on. <laughs> well, like I'm like I, I, I am a. Uh, so yeah, like uh, I guess I mark water because I mark an element. Yep. Uh, or do I choose which element? It makes sense to mark style, right? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, mark the one you rolled with. Is okay, mine. yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, then I'm like, all right, well, uh, like, so I'm like, I, I don't know how to deal with this. And then I'm like, well, I know someone who can help with me, but like, I've got a lot of things on my plate right now, so <laughs> I got to make sure that people aren't like, what, what, what's that? Where, where's? <laughs> um. I'm wondering if Jin, maybe you kind of head back to the uh, dressing room. Okay. To see if Zia's okay. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, she would do that. You are a physician. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's play out that conversation, and oh, then no. we'll call it call it a night. What does that What does that look like? Or Jin, what do you say to uh, Zia when you? show up at her dressing room oh uh so yeah zaya uh, jen will like knock uh, whatever knock on the door on, on the thing and then enter mm-hmm. and she's um, got like new robes on as like she's covered off because she had to abandon her cut up there, trying to cut up cover up so like you notice that she's very tense mm-hmm. uh do i gotta roll inner conflict again <laughs> i think i do it's yeah, you're the one. Yeah, it makes the most sense. Yeah. So, uh, oh, my nerves. I'm so frazzled. Uh, no. Control? Yeah, I guess I'll try to roll with metal. Uh, let's see. Caution? No. Creativity could work. Uh, no, nah, I'm not being passionate definitely not being patient so i'll say roll with metal control calculation reflection did it roll again 2d6 plus okay i got a seven what's your metal uh zero okay i'm mostly zeros well two zeros so did you mark xp oh no i didn't and you uh flee the scene or mark an element Oh, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll, it. well, I guess you need to spend. No, you can't, you can't bump that up. So. I, I mean, I could. I have three bonds, but okay. it's not, it's not worth it. I'm marking the element. It's all about marking elements. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, Jin, thank, uh, please come in. Uh, 
is uh like you see her like trying to like feel calm and like her hair's frazzled um she's very nervous scared jin kind of tilts her head and kind of looks raises an eyebrow of concern um the others are talking you, uh, you said you were weary uh, i'm we, and we are concerned are you not well oh yes um of course well the piece just was uh i put a a lot of my heart into my performance as you do and uh sometimes it uh the emotions get too strong and the heart aches i i heard uh there was excitement i'm sorry i missed are you okay do you would you like some tea uh do you need any how may i help assist you uh i am here to assist you uh there was a disturbance um i not nothing to worry about <laughs> lying um and um uh, just uh and it was um disposed of unfortunately the uh princess and her entourage had to uh uh retire for for the evening but uh the others are still uh awaiting your uh the continuation if you are able to uh, yes of course um i might need a moment i'm a bit weary right now uh, um do you need a may i assist you i can help you refocus your energy sure um help you help you with your you know basically do the physician stuff yeah. that, you know <laughs> roll, roll. Do you have a move or are you doing comfort or support uh no i don't have a move okay. uh, um, go for it i'll use a comfort and support basically using her physician abilities to help re uh Reinvigorate Zia, Zaya. Let me look at comfort and support real quick. All right. Let's see. And the question, as always, PC is roll what element hit. would you roll? That's the question. Let's see. Um, do you want something calming? Um. I'll roll Earth uh, for focus and and you know kind of help calm and focus focus uh, Zaya. So that's a plus Wow. Nice. Wow. <laughs> Heck yeah. What is that? So uh, I assume you're going to clear an element. Uh, let's see. On hit, they may accept your words. Yeah, uh, they can clear a checked element or gain a bond with you. And I can clear an element myself, asking a question they must answer, or you yep. gain a bond with them. Yeah. I mean, I'd like another bond. I got two with you. I'll clear I'll clear water. Clear, clearing the style <laughs> element's always <laughs> safe. Out. Yeah. Yes, yes. I always want to do that. Um, and, and Chad, what are you going to do? Uh, a Jin is going to clear her element, her fire, um, because she sees like in, in doing this and in, in extending the aid and kind of going through the motions of meditation, she's, it's calming herself as well. In, in doing the actions, it helps her kind of focus again too. That's great. As you two are sharing uh, this moment, um, um, uh, you hear a knock uh, on the door and someone enters. They're wearing very, uh, very nice, but very plain, uh, very nice, but very plain clothing. Um, and they're sort of, uh, veiled, uh, as mm -hmm. if they're trying to conceal, uh, their identity. Um, but, um, um, the voice sounds a little bit familiar and she enters, uh, the room and says, is it okay if I, come in and she removes her veil 
and it's Princess Shu. Oh no! <laughs> to check on you, and we are going to end the scene yep. uh, right there. Just like uh, it. <laughs> so uh, I think we'll um, uh, we'll end the session here. Uh, let's do an end of session move, which is basically handing out uh, experience points. Um, uh, at the end of the session, uh, if you significantly interacted with we'll call it one of your entanglements, you can mark two XP. Um, and if you mark uh, in, interacted with your other entanglement, you can mark one XP. Um, you'll notice that it says highlighted and I neglected to do this, but at the beginning of the session, what we're supposed to do is mark one of our entanglements uh, as a way of kind of reminding us to, hey, we should try and pursue this uh, entanglement. But I'll say if you engage with one, you get two. If you engage with both, you get three. So let me start, uh, Joe, with you. Did Zaya in engage with her entanglements at all? Uh, uh, just, just the one. Yes. Uh, Jin and Shu. Yep. Perfect. And uh, Michael, how did Bao do? Um, Bao interacted with Yin, uh, who I think is one of his. Let me double check. But I don't think it was major enough for a two. Do you mean you, gentlemen? You? Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, I do have an entanglement with you. So you'd get two XP. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. Take two. Okay. Sweet. And Drew, how did uh, gentleman you do? Uh, he interacted with Bao. Perfect. And uh, chat, how did Jin do? Uh, she interacted with uh, Princess Shu. Perfect. So that's two. Yep. Uh, so we will have to mix it up a bit uh, next time. I hope this um, gave Chad and Drew and uh, Michael a good feel that's for how the cool. game works. Um, did you all have any question, mechanical questions about the game that Joe or I could answer for you? I almost want to change out a move. <laughs> yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah. You yeah. played one session. That's fine. And uh, I think everyone seems to only have one move chosen. You get two. I don't know if everyone knows that. I did that on purpose for this oh, okay. very reason. Like, we don't know where things are going. So No problem. No problem. Yeah. I just know I'm like, oh, yeah, I want these two. These sound like fun. <laughs> that's good. But um, I've played this a lot, so. So yeah. let's... Yeah, the more I've played, I've played Jen, at least this session, I feel like the Once Upon a Time doesn't really fit her style, okay. her character. So I'll look up her sheet here. So let's go around the table and do uh, Stars and Wishes. If you haven't done this before, this is one of my favorite parts uh, of the session, honestly. A star is uh, something that you really liked about the session. You can uh, name one of the other players. You can name uh, each of the other players, just anything in particular, something that you felt proud of that you did, uh, and a wish then is something you'd like to see differently uh, next time or something you'd like to engage with next time. That can be direct feedback uh, to me, the GM. Uh, it could be something that you just want your character uh, to experience. So, Joe, can I put you on the spot? To yeah, totally, totally. Uh, huge stars to gentlemen, you and bow, and like I'm like, yep, I'm here to take care of the ghost. Ah, uh, bye. I'm not <laughs> dealing with this. You, you, gentlemen, you, you take care of this, and then gentlemen, you just takes care of it. <laughs> I'm like, well, you see, the thing about demons is, if we are like, there's a lot that goes into this, so it's going to be like a three day job minimum. As an IT professional, I was definitely drawing from a real life experience for that one. <laughs> oh, I've talked to those guys before. Yeah. And uh, Joe, wishes? Uh, you know, like, you know, it was first session. So I look forward to interacting with gentlemen, you and Bow. So, yeah. But I also wish Princess Shu would stay out of my business. She's always showing up. The freak. Yeah. She is like perfectly connected to create some tension. So, uh, cool. Uh, let me come to uh, Michael starts. I think I definitely star to gentleman you because that was a very fun interaction having that that like 
perfect turnaround. I think that was that was a lot of fun. Um, and start to, to Joe for the 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 I don't want to say superhero drama, but the superhero drama <laughs> was very good. Um, I have a time. As far as, as, far as wishes, uh, I'm excited to meet GM whenever we do. But this is a lot of fun. Cool. Uh, Drew, what do you got? Stars to bow. That was awesome. Just uh, playing off that and trying to play the the straight guy to bow's nervous energy was was fun. Um, and uh, also to yeah the to Chad and Joe the the whole interactions there between the two of you bouncing off each other was great. Uh, wishes I'm really looking forward to seeing the the gang come together, see how that happens and what comes of it. Perfect, thank you. And uh, Chad, what do you got? Um. Stars to Joe, definitely uh, the the entertainer and the the, the vigilante is just fantastic. Um, but also stars to Bow and you, uh, all three of you, are just amazing. Um, that whole uh, the the whole ghost playing out is just could could not be could not come together better. Um, just was a really well done interaction. It was really good. Um, and um, I enjoy the inner conflict. Uh, I really like that inner conflict uh, move. That's a really interesting move. Um, but um, yeah. And wishes? Would you like to see um, uh, definitely want to get the gang together. Uh, I think uh, this, this group will definitely um, be very, uh, just the way that they're kind of intertwined intertwined together i think they'll be definitely very entertaining to uh to start interacting uh yeah my uh star uh first of all uh to joe for uh showing up and i, I really <laughs> appreciate um having another veteran around just to um uh help kind of uh guide our group of uh, new gauntleteers uh and uh joe you are always much better with the rules on these games than i am so even on the games that I design, you're better for this. So, um, uh, so that was uh, so. Thank you uh, for uh, for coming, um, and uh, all three of you. I really loved what you've done with your characters, and I really um, just appreciate your uh, diving in and kind of embracing uh, the genre and em embracing the game uh, really well. So, uh, thank you for that. Um, as far as wishes, uh, you all took what I was going to say, which is. I felt like there was, um, I like kind of starting out separate and bringing you all together. It's just part of my style as a GM. I thought that worked to give each of you kind of a, a, a deep dive. Um, but there were kind of gaps for each of you as well as we were kind of dealing with each each group. Um, so thanks for your patience with that. Uh, but yeah, let's try and get the group uh, together next time. So that's what I'll be thinking about over the coming week. Cool. All right, friends. Uh, we have come to an end. So I just need uh, your permission to post this publicly. Is that okay? Does anyone have any concerns? That's that? fine. Is that all right? Yep. There's like literally two subscribers to my YouTube channel. So okay. Um, so, it's fine. Um, okay, cool. Thank you much uh, for that. And uh, with that, I think we are done. So I will see you all next week. Have good weeks, everybody. Good night. Thank you very good much. Night. Bye, all. Happy Veterans Day, everyone. Yep. For tomorrow. Right. Thank you. Thank you.